Alright guys, welcome back to F1 News. The first serious round of upgrades of the season expected to arrive in Suzuka this upcoming weekend for the Japanese Grand Prix. Red Bull, Ferrari, Mercedes among others looking to bring changes to their car, but the feeling especially from Mercedes is that don't expect much from these changes. They are still very much underwhelmed by the performance of their car. Still lots of things to solve. Will these upgrades even move them at all in the right direction? Very much interested in your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I greatly appreciate it. It is officially, by the way, the worst day of the year to talk about news. Watch out for stuff like this. It's April Fool's. But um, what we're going to discuss today isn't, especially on this side. This actually, with the timing, seems like a bit of an April Fool's joke, but it is not. MotoGP will come under the heading of Liberty Media, of course, the current owners of Formula One. This has caused lots of discussion and debate. I don't massively follow MotoGP. I watch it occasionally. There has been fear, and maybe understandable fear, from MotoGP fans that some of the trends in F1 will be replicated in MotoGP as well when it comes down to let's say ticket prices or well i want to say street circuits but really given the way that uh, bike racing is walls and no runoff areas doesn't really work so i don't expect we're going to get a moto gp f1 las vegas crossover but it is something to consider on the formula one side that i feel like surely liberty media's first port of call would be to have some sort of moto gp f1 dual weekend at some point in the season there would be only certain circuits where that would be viable i imagine unless they want to go completely bonkers which I don't think they will. There has been talk about that as well. To be fair, in certain countries, F1 TV is a particularly good deal. So maybe there are some positives to come about this as well. And, you know, Liberty Media get criticised a lot nowadays. And I can understand why. But I still feel like the sport is in a better position than it was under Bernie Eccleston when, you know, social media didn't even exist as a concept. So whatever you think about this, Liberty Media say, look, we're not planning to change it. It's already an unbelievable product. But, you know, how these things tend to go, I'm sure they might have some ideas for the near future. This also, some interesting words here from Lewis Hamilton, right? He was on the cover of GQ magazine again for, obviously, a photo shoot as usually happens. And various other comments on the state of things right now. I actually thought he was rather explicit it on discussing the 2021 World Championship. Usually don't see him this blunt on the topic. Was I robbed? Obviously. I mean, you know the story, but I think what made it really beautiful was that my dad was with me and the day that it hurt the most, he was there and the way he raised me to always stand up, keep your head high. I went to congratulate Max and um, yeah, these next 50 meters that I walk is where I either fall to the ground or die or rise up, he says. He also went on to say this, if I see a clip of that uh, moment, I still feel it, but I'm at peace with how things have um, you know, been handled to the present day. Also just discussing really the future of himself at Mercedes. There's been lots of talk about this as well in terms of what Mercedes are going to do as the year progresses. When upgrades start to arrive, what does that mean for Hamilton? When are they going to start to exclude him from car-related discussions? They know he's going to Ferrari. He knows he's going to Ferrari. And when they start to discuss next year's W16 or even potentially the W17 from 2026, the first car of that set of regulations, which is where Mercedes will really intend to get back on top. Any discussions related to that, they're not going to tell Lewis as much as they might otherwise to and as much as they might tell George Russell. So that will be a point of contention and debate as the season progresses. Russell actually comments on that in a second. We'll see. And Hamilton says, yeah, I still want to lift Mercedes as high as I can this year. I want to kill every other team. We want to beat them. But um, sure, the drivers might still be there for Mercedes. The car most certainly isn't and they will need some changes. One other team that's struggling, former teammate of Hamilton, Valtteri Bottas, is Sauber. There's been a few things said on their pit stops. They have had a disastrous start to the season in this category, and apparently it's not the mechanic's fault. It is a hardware fault when it comes to the wheel nuts of the car. So there's lots of discussion on this recently, and the feeling is that it's a fundamental problem with the wheel nuts and the wheel hubs. In race conditions, when the temperatures are hotter, they get jams onto the removal device, it seems, which then takes 20 seconds to remove it, and that's why they have these terrible pit stops right now. The feeling was that they might be able to resolve it. I think their issue is they can't go back to last year's spec on this stuff because it's not compatible with their new suspension. There's a few problems with it, really. So they need new hardware. That's the reason that's you know, causing all these problems. And they're feeling it seems to be that they will, going for Japan and beyonds, probably just sacrifice time in the pit stops to try and be safe with it. And they might well accept 
five second stops just to try and prevent this occurrence, which is bad, but it's not as bad as a 30 second stop. And that is the issue for Sauber. They want to bring upgrades to their car, but they can't do that until they've resolved issues that is literally destroying their race and any of their chances to actually put points on the board. So they are now trying to create new hardware in their you know, devices for the pit stops to actually go through to make this improvement. But the lead time on this is rather significant. Their plan is it's probably going to be another three races. Like it's probably going to be through Japan, China, maybe for Miami they can have these things here. But yeah, as is described, unfortunately, the lead time for new parts is very long. I hope we can be ready in Japan and the problem will no longer occur. But it doesn't feel like that's going to happen. It seems like there's like an eight week lead time here to design and produce the relevant parts. Until then, they've got new procedures to try and resolve the issue, but they will probably lose more time in the pit stops to counter the problem. So big issue for those guys. Until that's resolved, it feels almost impossible that they're going to be able to score points, which is, of course, important for their drivers. Joe and Bottas both need to show this season they are still capable of being a top-level Formula 1 driver. Certainly that's true for Bottas. Joe may still have opportunities as well, but it's tough when your car isn't scoring points. The feeling is they're looking to bring like a B-spec car at some point. So for Imola, they have a major overhaul in the works that is RB20-esque, apparently. We'll see if that works. Obviously, we know that AMR, right, Aston Martin, when they bought the AMR22B back in 2022, that looked suspiciously like a Red Bull. The Red Bull guys had the Green Bull cans on their kind of pit wall, which is pretty entertaining. And there was talk as to why and how, but to be fair, that car, that B-Spec version, did improve their performance. Whether Sauber are capable of that, I don't know. They are, however, one of only two teams at a Pirelli test in Suzuka on next year's tyres after the Japanese Grand Prix. So RB and Sauber are going to be the two teams attending that one. But teams are looking to start to bring upgrades round about now. Japan is going to be the first target for these changes. Mainly Imola, however, will be the big one. But teams, if they want to get ahead of the curve, they will bring stuff now. And it's going to be a really interesting race in Suzuka because it was only six months ago when the last Japanese Grand Prix happens. It's usually far later in the year. This time it's much earlier. Different climate, that means as well. And there's talk on to what is going to happen there. But Max Verstappen, six months ago, dominated the race to come back from the result in Singapore. He won it by a mile. He put eight tenths a lap pretty much on anybody that wasn't called Lando Norris. And on Lando Norris, he was putting like three, four tenths a lap. So that Red Bull was dominant around Suzuka and it has been for the last couple of years, especially in the hands of Max Verstappen. I also think this weekend is kind of a key testing point for Checo Perez. Tomo actually mentioned this here on Twitter earlier today, saying that, yeah, how close can Perez get? Because last year, Max was on pole by six tenths and chucked an absolute, you know, monstrous amount on Sergio Perez. So this will, we'll see, really. This is the weekend where Red Bull are expected to absolutely crush the competition. If they don't absolutely crush the competition, then we'll see see when we get to other circuits what happens there. The McLaren should be good around here. That would be the expectation based on their performance in those higher speed corners where they have some strengths. Yes, they will probably lose in sector two and in the final chicane to the Red Bull. But apart from that, they should be relatively competitive. The feeling is though, they still have problems to solve. They're going to need another 12 months, they say, to fix its remaining issues. If they can achieve that, who knows? Maybe next year they can fight for the championship. But the feeling is that, yeah, this year is too early for McLaren. But realistically, you look at the Mercedes-powered cars, McLaren are the most promising. And let's say Mercedes produce a rocket ship of a car, an engine, let's say, in 2026. Does that make McLaren favourite to that point? Because... You know, the assumption would be on current trajectories that McLaren can produce a better car aerodynamically than Mercedes seem presently capable of. And if the Mercedes engine is a rocket ship, as there have been some rumors suggesting come 2026, that could be very interesting. Leans towards this whole Ferrari versus McLaren resurgence storyline that I've been discussing. But Andrea Stella, team principal, says that by race six or seven, so call it Imola, effectively, they should have a decent round of upgrades. Last year it was Austria, right? They brought the upgrade to Norris's car and all of a sudden, they were as competitive, if not more competitive than the Mercedes from then on out for the rest of the season. But teams will bring some changes to Suzuka. It was the scene last year, let's not forget, of the Ferrari bringing major changes that massively put their car in a step forward. The SF23 was not good, but in Suzuka, they brought some big upgrades, I think, to the floor that massively improved the performance of the turn-in of the car. Charles Leclerc really liked it, and from then to the end of the season, he was dominating Carlos Sainz, and, you know, Sainz relatively to Leclerc's struggle 
old from then to the end of the season. Still with some decent races in there. He's a good driver after all. This season, I don't think we're going to see anything that dramatic with the car, but we will see some parts. The rumour was that Ferrari are so confident in their progress and are so confident in the direction of their car and the fact that their car is a very solid base to build on, of course, already a race winning car and a 1-2 race winning car as of Australia. Sure, Max's DNF helped matters, but nonetheless, they turned up on Friday and were immediately the class of the fields. And that pretty much remained true for the weekends. If the race pace advantage over Soja Perez is anything to go by. So Ferrari is so confident they're bringing some of their Imola upgrades early to Suzuka, which may give them some degree of performance edge. Red Bull, it seems though, are going to do the same. This was the talking point that Red Bull for Suzuka were planning a big upgrade potentially a zero pod-esque upgrade. That rumour now seems to have died down somewhat, but it does feel like Red Bull have something in the works. The feeling is that it's something either more circuit specific or maybe something slightly less severe, but we'll see because if Ferrari keep putting the pressure on Red Bull, they will have to keep developing their car. There's no secret that last year they basically gave up at some point and started developing the RB20 from the ground up, which has worked out spectacularly for them so far. They're of course leading both championships still, but it's rather close after the Max DNF lost. Australia and the Perez difficult performance but as Kamal here says these are the teams that he is expecting to make changes so Ferrari as we have discussed Alpine who need any help they can get at the moment racing bulls which is an interesting one because Snowder at his home Grand Prix if he has a very good performance there maybe helped by a couple of upgrades and Ricardo doesn't given what happened at Ricardo's Grand Prix home Grand Prix just last weekend that is quite the statement but we discussed yesterday how the Ricardo angle is quite nuanced because Racing Bulls kind of want him for the sponsorship angle. Helmut Marco would probably be keen to put Sonoda or Lawson, sorry, in the car with Sonoda. Christian Horner may feel differently on that one, but Red Bull, Mercedes, and even Williams. Williams is a kind of confusing one to me just because they're only going to have two chassis there again. They've managed to, we think, repair Albon's chassis from Australia, so they will be able to give that back to Albon and give Sargent's chassis back to Sargent. But um, they will need to, well, hope that that actually goes through but they still want to have a third chassis. So yeah, if they are bringing an upgrade to their car and they still are somewhat at risk of losing parts because Sauber, I think, brought a new front wing. That was actually another talking point of the article we discussed earlier. Sauber brought a new front wing, kick, Sauber, stake, whatever. I'm still calling it Sauber, but I guess it's stake technically. Now, they brought a new upgrade, the green car, to Australia. The front wing worked because Joe broke his riding over the curbs too aggressively in qualifying and that meant that Bottas had the faster spec car and it proved to be faster based on the data. So Salma know that they've brought a change that helped them, but because they only had a couple of versions of it, once it was broken on Joe's car, they had to start from the pit lane and take another version, which of course, not so ideal. But the feeling is from Kamala as well that don't expect big things here. This isn't Mercedes bringing an absolute major overhaul of their car that's going to take them in the right direction. And the main concern for Mercedes was that was said after Jeddah and probably remains true after Australia is that they don't really have the answers. They said after Jeddah, we need to do some tests in Australia to make sure we understand this car because if we don't understand it, then our upgrade plan doesn't work. The teams decide and decipher what their upgrade plan is going to be before the season has begun. As we mentioned with Salva earlier, there is a lead time on these changes. You design the car last year, you then make the car. By the time you finalize the car, you realize, okay, there's this, that and the other that we could probably look to change. Then you design those parts, then you manufacture those parts. Parts. But all of a sudden, you go two races, anything, hang on a second, our simulations don't work anymore. That front wing change, that floor change, that leading edge of the floor change, whatever you want to do, that might not work as it says it will in the simulator because our simulator doesn't work properly. So all of a sudden, you've got these upgrades that you want to try, but yet you don't know if they're actually going to work or not. And that's the problem that Mercedes realised they were running into in Australia or in Jeddah and needed to test in Australia. But it's not like Australia was any good either, right? If you look at the numbers, these are their deltas to the fastest performance in race trim over the first three races of the last three seasons. In 2022, the average gap was something like 0.865. This year, it's something like 0.85, which is um, obviously still bad, especially because the the rest of the grid has closed up, right? You might look at these numbers and think, well, they've not got worse with respect to the leaders, which maybe is true, but given the fact that Aston Martin have been closer, given the fact that McLaren are getting closer, 
and the fact that you would expect some field convergence, I think they certainly have got worse. And you see that based on points scored this season. The only decent number here is last year's Australia, when they were only a couple of tenths off the pace of Max in the Red Bull. But this year, they were back to being almost a second lap down, at least for the first couple of stints. Then magically in the final stints, they somehow had some pace again. They don't seem to understand why. So they're not going to bring much to their car, but the feeling is that whatever they do bring possibly isn't going to do all that much either. So I don't think that, you know, Hamilton or Russell will be massively optimistic about this. There is one thing to be said, though, on the power unit front. There was a feeling that for this year, Mercedes had found something in their power unit to just generate more performance in general. But apparently they've not been able to really express that. Cooling was one reason why, certainly in Bahrain, that was a big problem that they think cost them a chance of an easy podium. But having the last couple of races gone in the way that they have done, it's not so clear to say that would have been the case. And Russell also does say though about the situation at Mercedes saying that um, he's been incredibly professional Hamilton with the team and that the working relationship with everyone at Mercedes gives the impression that nothing has changed Coulthard probably said something to the effect that you know he's got his head elsewhere right that's what he said yeah he's always basically driving for Ferrari in his mind that's not the case the team gave us both equal opportunities this has always been the case since the beginning and every time upgrades are made to the car it concerns both of us at the same time while other teams often make one before the other Lewis wants to succeed in his last year with that. So that's what Russell says, that as the season goes on, Mercedes, when they do bring upgrades, they will arrive to both cars at the same time and they won't prioritise Russell as their future driver for next year. That I'm sure will be true for now. Whether that's true towards the end of the season, if they're rushing something, I guess that remains to be seen. Andrea Kimi Antonelli, by the way, will be doing an F1 test later this month. I think they're going to maybe chuck him in the W12 and then chuck him in the W13 as soon as he possibly can, basically. So yeah, they're going to get as many miles from this guy as possible. There were some other April Fool's related rumours today on Liam Law. Lawson. Well, I saw one. It was a fake tweet, you know, but it said, oh, Lawson confirms to racing bills for Ricardo and all this. But maybe that won't be out of the realms of possibility in the near future. But Lawson actually said yesterday that he's looking to enter Formula 1 regardless, obviously. And if that's not in the Red Bull stable, then he will look elsewhere. I think other teams would be interested, for sure, in Lawson's services. There was a feeling that if Alpha Tauri Racing Bulls couldn't give him a seat this year, then maybe Williams would have made sense, even for this season. But his feeling was, or the belief is, that he was effectively told, look, Liam, just bide your time. We'll get you a seat next year, for sure, after we resolve the internal drama. But um, it's always difficult to say whether that's going to happen. So Lawson's still making it clear that like he's not putting all his eggs in the Red Bull basket, as it were. He is definitely open for offers if other teams were keen to potentially do so. Just this and Philip Orton before we close out the video, the weather situation for this weekend. As I say, it's going to be a Friday, Saturday, Sunday Grand Prix in Suzuka, again, rather early morning for us in the rest of the world. But we get it easy for the rest of the year, so I'm not complaining. But at Sunday's current forecast is as follows. Steady rain expected due to a weather front crossing. High amount of rain possible situation to be monitored with the next weather simulation so we've seen typical isn't it really japan it always rains and when it rains we put the wet tires on and the wet tires are useless so then everybody pits for the inters and uh, i don't know if we're going to see this again but we may well do potential first rain grand prix of the weekend or of the season coming up in this upcoming weekend and also just there's some f1 big data i don't know how accurate this stuff is but um these are ai related simulations given the strengths and weaknesses of relevant teams at this specific circuit to see what we might expect come qualifying and the Grand Prix. These are the supposed race pace sims here for Suzuka with Red Bull expected to be three tenths ahead of McLaren and Ferrari eight tenths ahead of Mercedes and a second plus ahead of Aston Martin and beyond. I actually respect this analysis just because it's not as obviously fake news as the F1 Zone website stuff is when they come out saying that we're going to have five teams within two tenths. Nobody believes it. This is more believable. But of course, it's based on no data that we have from Suzuka so far this season. So very much into your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.